Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I've been getting a lot of boa constrictor questions from you guys, so today I'm going to answer some of these questions. A lot of the questions I get asked again and again and again, so I thought I'd focus on some of the more commonly asked questions. And I imagine a lot of you have thought about these questions, haven't asked them, so hopefully I can give you some answers today. I appreciate all of the questions that you have and all the um, input that you have on my channel. So please keep the questions coming and I'll do my best to answer whatever you want to know about boa constrictors. So our first question, and I get a lot of questions similar to this one. Hi Brian, I just bought a boa and I was told from the seller it's a 25% BCC Jungle Kraken Leopard Motley Het VPI Blood Snow Glow. Can you tell me if the boa is as it's described? So I didn't obviously get that, that's a little bit of an extreme example, but I get similar types of questions. And the short answer to your question is no, in almost all the cases, I can't tell you 100% what your boa is. I can give a pretty good guess. In some cases, I can be pretty sure, but in the case of many complex mixtures like morph boas that might have hets, I, I really can't tell you. And so I would say that, first of all, when you're getting a boa, make sure you ask the seller to provide all the information that he or she has and preferably written down and keep track of it so you don't lose it because sometimes it's extremely difficult if not possible to tell by looking at a boa what the type of boa it is so obviously with hets you can't really tell unless you breed them and do a test cross uh, with locality boas you know, sometimes you can get a pretty good idea based on the physical characteristics, but some localities like Suriname and Guyana, there's no way to tell uh, based just on the appearance. In other cases, you might have an animal that's not a pure locality. It might be like, you know, 75% pure or something, but uh, it's not pure. So unless you have that documentation, there's no way to tell for sure. You know, and people send me photos all the time and I, I do my best. In some cases I can look at the photo and I can be reasonably confident it is what I think it is. But in many cases, I really can't provide a very good idea. It could be, you know, a number of different things. So again, make sure that you ask the questions before you uh, obtain the BOA. So a second related question I get pretty often is, I'm looking for a leopard IMG het call female. Do you have any available or know where I can get such a boa? And so the answer is that I almost always give out is there's really three main sources that I would look if you're looking for any boa. And these are Morph Market, Kingsnake.com, and FaunaClassifieds.com. So I don't have any kind of secret network of boas. You know, I know some breeders, I know what they're working on, but this is public information. And I always try to provide information about what I'm working on. And I just released a series of four videos that go through all my pairings for 2021. So make sure to check them out so you can see what I'm working on if you're looking for a specific locality boa. But there's kind of this misconception out there that there's this cabal of locality breeders and we're keeping all of the really nice animals to ourselves and you have to be a member of the club to get these animals and that's not really true. If you're looking for a specific type of boa, the best way to increase your chances of getting this boa is to do your research on who's working with these animals and follow them, follow if they have a page on Facebook, follow that. You may want to send them an email or a message just introducing yourself and asking if they have any expected plans for breeding these animals. And I, you know, if, if you're interested in any of my animals, um, I'm always willing to let you know what I'm working on. So don't feel shy about reaching out to me and checking in from time to time. The next question is, what would you expect the lifespan of a boa constrictor to be in captivity? I've seen estimates ranging from 20 to 40 plus years. Well, that's a fairly good estimate. I would say that it's more likely to be on the lower end of that estimate. I think in boa constrictors, people always focus on the maximums, you know, the maximum size, the maximum age. As far as I know, the record for the lifespan of a captive boa constrictor was 41 years. Your odds of your boa constrictor making it that old are 
pretty slim. So that would be like 120 years for a human, which is about the maximum a human can live. So I would guesstimate that your average lifespan of a boa constrictor is gonna be more like about half that, around maybe 20, 25 years. Um, if a boa is power fed, it's gonna be probably considerably shorter, maybe as short as 10 years. But if a boa is properly cared for and given the right feeding regimen, you can expect, unless there's some disease that it gets, it probably will live to be in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 years. Next, we have a breeding related question. And the question is, have you considered taking your possibly gravid boas to a vet for an ultrasound to determine if they're gravid? And so the answer is no, I have not considered doing that and I would not do that for a number of reasons. And so the first is, I'm pretty sure that my boas are gravid just based on their physical appearance and their behavior. So I don't need to do an ultrasound. Um, the other issue is that there are some potentially negative consequences of doing that kind of procedure. Although ultrasounds are supposed to be safe, the, the fact is you would need to take your gravid boa in the car to the vet. You would have to disturb the animal and put it under a lot of stress. And when I have gravid female boas, I disturb them as little as possible. I don't even move them if I don't absolutely have to, just because they're very sensitive. And if a boa is under stress when it's gravid, there's a chance that it might deliver the babies early. And of course the babies are gonna be stillborn or undeveloped and you could just ruin the pregnancy. So with my gravid females, I do as little as possible to disturb them. So I was watching a show the other day, one of these zoo reality shows where they film behind the scenes at, at a zoo. And there's, you know, there's a, you know, a bunch of them now on the different channels. But I was amazed that they had this lizard that they thought was possibly gravid. And so what do they do to confirm that it's gravid? They stuck it in an x-ray machine. And of course, x-rays are mutagenic. They're the last thing that you want to expose, you know, a developing fetus to. Um, imagine if a woman, you know, you went to a hospital, uh, you were pregnant and went to a hospital and they wanted to x-ray you to look at the fetus. It would be, you know, just crazy. So I was shocked that they do this, but there's apparently a zoo where they think it's okay to x-ray, you know, possibly pregnant animals. Um, so I would say that to any kind of medical procedure, has a possible risk of doing harm to your animal. And so to really think about whether you need to do this procedure. And in the case of confirming pregnancy, that's kind of a nice to have. But if you're pretty sure that your animal's pregnant, you can just, you know, kind of wait it out and, and you know, treat it as though it is, it is pregnant or gravid. Um, I think people in general, they want to have like this absolute control over their animals when they're breeding, but we really just have to let nature take its course. We do our best, we give them the right conditions, but then we have to let them make the babies themselves and you know deliver the babies themselves. So no, I would not consider going to do an ultrasound on a possibly gravid boa. Here's a quick question that I get. My baby boa, is always in its hide and never comes out. Is this normal? And I get a lot of questions similar like to this, you know, my boa spends all its time on the hot side, my boa spends all the time on the cold side, et cetera, et cetera. My boa is always climbing. So as long as you have the right environmental conditions, if your boa prefers to be on the cooler side more than the hot side, chances are that's fine. Um, baby boas and lots of boas in general spend a lot of time hiding. So they will spend virtually all the time in the hiding place. They're just in there chilling out, waiting for food to come by. So you don't really need to worry about these things, provided that your boa isn't displaying any signs of illness and that you have the right environmental conditions. If your boas, like all your boas are on the cold side all the time or the hot side, double check the temperatures and just make sure that you have the desired range because often if all of your animals are on the cold side or the hot side, it's either too cold or too hot. But if it's just one, you know, a lot of times boas will uh, prefer being on the cooler side and they might not hang out so much over the hotter side. So I wouldn't worry about that. So I get a lot of questions about feeding boas and I've done some videos recently on this. It's generated some questions and comments. 
as you know one of my main messages on this channel is that a lot of people overfeed their boas which leads to health problems so i thought i would answer some of these feeding questions as quickly and succinctly as possible so the first my boa wants to feed every seven to ten days i'm currently feeding it every 14 days but after about a week she gets really hungry and starts to strike at moving objects is feeding every 10 days too much well i give you these guidelines for feeding your boas but remember they're guidelines basically you want slow steady growth in your boa without the boa being obese so you can vary the feeding guidelines i think i've said that in general i feed my uh, zero to two year old boas about once every two weeks some boas you can feed as often as every 10 days or even as often as every seven days for babies if they're growing and they're not becoming obese. So these are just guidelines. You don't have to stick exactly to the guidelines. You can vary it a little bit. The second feeding question is, my boa has gone off feed for about five weeks but seems healthy. Is this a cause for concern? Well, boas will often go off feed, especially around the winter time. So around now, they just, they're going into their winter cycling and they're not gonna be as hungry. Or if they're males, they might be focused on possibly breeding, so they're not gonna be as interested in food. So if a boa is in healthy and in good shape, five weeks is really nothing. It can go months and months without eating. And typically my adult boas don't feed for about two to three months over the you know the winter cycling which is going to start soon okay in the part question number three on feeding have you ever played around with food type well i primarily feed mice and rats but i do mix it up a bit and i feed quail i feed um some of my larger boas did small chickens as well i haven't fed rabbits but that's another potential food source that you can feed to your boa how do you feed multiple food items? Well, it's no really no different from feeding one food item. You let your boa eat the one item and then you offer a second item. And boas will almost always take it with gusto. In general, it's probably more, a little more cost effective to feed a larger food item than two smaller food items. But remember, you don't want to feed an item that's so big that it leaves a large bulge. You just want a slightly visible bulge in the animal. And then the last feeding related question, I have an obese boa. How often to feed to get it back to uh, ideal weight? Well, with an obese boa, you wanna slowly taper the food down. Um, often boas are adopted and they were fed every week or every other week and they're obese. So just going to an every three to four week food regimen, the boa will lose weight over time. You don't wanna starve your boa. You don't wanna just cut it off and only feed it once every two or three months. But you should go down to the recommended feeding regimen with the uh, uh, winter cycling where it doesn't eat at all. And then over the course of many months, up to a year or so, it'll gradually lose all that excess weight. Next, I have an, kind of an unusual question I got. I saw on a snake website that they recommend dropping a penny in the water dish. What are your thoughts on this? And when I read it, I was a little taken aback because I had never heard of this. But my thought, my, my um, impression is that this somehow is a way that you can prevent growth of bacteria and you can prevent the water from going bad. That's, you know, what I'm thinking. Uh, you know, someone correct me if I'm wrong. But I would say that this is really not a good idea because you want to just uh, clean your water bowl at least once a week, preferably twice a week, with some light dish soap and replace the fresh water. You don't need to put a penny in there to try to, you know, keep it fresh longer if that is really why. So don't put a penny in your boas water dish. So the next questions I get a lot are about available boas. And one common question is, do you have a website? Where do you announce the availability of your boas? Do you ship to Europe? So the first question, do I have a website? No, I don't. Websites are really so 1990s and I don't have time to set up a website and I didn't think people really did websites anymore with all the social media and you know more dynamic ways of connecting online. So I don't have a website. The way that I connect with people is obviously through these videos, through my Facebook page, Brian Boas. Um, I sell online on faunaclassifieds.com 
and I always announce availability of my babies on these videos. And as I mentioned earlier, I just did a series of four videos on my planned 2021 locality boa breeding pairs. So make sure to check that out. And if you see something you might be interested in, you know, stay tuned to the channel for regular updates as we get closer to the babies becoming available. The question about do I ship to Europe? Currently, I don't ship outside of the United States. That's just due to the logistical complexity with shipping live animals across the ocean. And then another question that I got was about my Christmas tree boa rack. People asked where you could get these Iris Christmas tree storage tubs. And they have them at a lot of the big box stores like Walmart and a few others. You just look in the Christmas decoration section. They're only available around Christmas time. So they're probably available right now, you know, since it's around Thanksgiving. And they will be available typically through around New Year's, but then they, you can't get them. So make sure if you want to build a Christmas tree tub boa rack that you go and you buy them now while you have the chance. Um, back when I bought them, about my, my own tubs about six, five, six years ago, I think they were like 30 bucks a piece. I think they're probably more like 40, 45 now. But they're still a relatively reasonable way to house a small to medium adult boa. Next question, do Peruvian boas like this one get yellower with age? Your babies seem so gray compared to your adults. And yes, they do. Peruvian boas, like many types of boas, do change color considerably as they grow to adulthood. So the BCC in general, including Suriname, Peruvian, and other types of BCC, typically start out as babies very gray. And then they gradually get more and more color. Um, the full adult colors come in sometime around four or five years old. Uh, with the Peruvian boas, they just get this beautiful golden color like this one. So as you can probably see, the true red tail boas definitely get more colorful with age and they don't have their beautiful bright colors until they reach adulthood. So you should uh, definitely check in with your breeders and see if you can get pictures of the adult breeder animals just to give you a better idea of what the babies are going to grow into. And this goes for other types of locality boas. Another example that changes colors are the longicata boas, the Peruvian longtail boas that start off light, but then they get much darker with age. Morph boas also change in color a lot with time. And unfortunately, a lot of morph boas are the brightest and most colorful when they're babies, but then they kind of lose their color. For example, call albinos are a morph that's famous for starting out with a lot of bright yellows and oranges, but unfortunately, a lot of them wash out and become less, much less colorful with age. Although there are some bloodlines like the lipstick line call albinos that hold their color better as they reach adulthood. And so the last is really more of a comment than a question. I'm just going to read it. Um, I just do not get why anyone would like an albino snake of any type as a true red tail or any naturally colored snake is far more attractive than a morph snake. And they prefaced it by saying, well, that's just their opinion. And so, you know, one thing that I was kind of surprised about from the comments, I know that people love locality boas, but I just didn't know how much the people that watch these videos, they're just so much more into the locality boas than the morph boas. And so I would say that one of the great, th great things about boas is we have this amazing amount of diversity to choose from, and there's so many different animals that you can keep. It's just a great area to be in, and there's never been a better time to be in boas. Uh, a lot of reptiles, there's really no or very few locality animals. For example, reticulated pythons, although there certainly are in the wild a lot of different localities, no one really seems to be working with these and they're just working with the morphs. There's just not a whole lot of other types of reptiles other than boa constrictors where people focus so much on locality specific animals. Just a few other types of it, lo, reptiles with locality specifics that I can think of are uh, certain types of colubrids, uh, certain types of pythons like carpet pythons, green tree pythons, but there's really not a whole lot. And I think when you look at the number of different locality boas as well as the number of different morph boas, I think boa constrictors are probably the most diverse reptiles that you can work with in captivity. 
you know, the ball pythons might have more morph boas, but they certainly don't have anything close to the types of locality boas that we have for boa constrictors. And so, of course, locality boas and morph boas appeal to people for different reasons. You know, the locality people want more of a natural history, like a science type pet. They want to study the biology and the evolution. The people that are attracted to morph boas are more looking for a good pet that they can keep as a pet. And, you know, an analogy is with dogs. If you're at a zoo, you want to see a wolf in a cage and you want to admire the natural beauty of the wolf. But then if you want an animal like a wolf that you can maintain in your house, that's going to be convenient. You get yourself a golden retriever or a poodle or a mixed breed or whatever your dog of choice is. But they have different things that appeal to different people. Um, I, you know, I think boas are great to be in and I really like both morph and locality boas. I just find it a little unusual that many people on this who watch these videos are so much more into the locality than the morph boas. So that's, I'll just shut up now that I think I've said my piece. So anyway, I hope this answers some of your questions. Keep the great questions coming and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.